October, in my opinion, is by far the best month of the year. From my birthday to Halloween, who doesn't love October? With Bray Wyatt coming back, it only made sense to do a Halloween special. So I thought to myself, what should I do? After scrapping another video though, I decided to rate WWE wrestlers based on how creepy they are. From Undertaker to the Boogeyman, there have been some spooky wrestlers over the years. So let's rate them. The ratings are going to be based on how scary they look, how badass they were as characters, and who scared the most kids out of all of them. Because it's time to scare some kids. Like the video if you like candy corn, but other than that, let's go ahead and start. The Undertaker. Starting off right with the legend. Undertaker as a kid, to me, was just a brute. He looked dangerous and looked like he could be the leader of a biker gang or something. I don't know. But as far as creepy, he was never really that creepy to me. The real creepy one was Paul Bear. I mean, the guy was a real life mortician and this meant that he knew how to dispose of bodies in real life. The description of mortician is this. A mortician prepares deceased peoples for wakes, funerals, and intimate by embalming, dressing, cosmetically enhancing, and casketing them. This means Paul Bear was out here in real life putting makeup on dead people. Not to mention his voice and mannerisms along with the urn. It made you feel like they had powers and could be watching you as a kid while you're brushing your teeth. And I know this made kids cry, so as a package, I'll give Undertaker an 8 out of 10. The Boogeyman. I'm gonna start off by saying he is something. The Boogeyman had some memorable moments, and most notably in my head, when John Cena opened his door backstage. Most people probably remember this man for one thing, and one thing only. Eating worms. He ate worms all the time and even bit off Jillian Hall's face at one point. His entrance was fantastic and really was one of a kind. He was really more nasty than creepy though, and he was kind of a jobber, so... It would be kind of hard to take him too seriously. I'll rate the Boogeyman a 6 out of 10. Alright, the next one, Kane. The real life Jason Voorhees, who since the get-go, people knew Kane was dangerous. He was ripping doors off hinges and setting people on fire. I remember when I was in second grade, I experienced the internet for the first time in the new house that we had just moved to three years earlier. Uh, I had a tablet and I would remember going on there all the time, like every day. I would go on there and search up YouTube videos of WWE. I just like watching WWE YouTube videos, like I was obsessed. I went on there one day and in my recommended, I saw a video titled, Kane Sets Cameraman on Fire, Raw March 23rd, 1998. I clicked on it and I heard this. Bro, if the appearance wasn't enough, the song definitely was. It sounded like something people today would call an aesthetic, but don't let them fool you. This song was straight out of a horror movie. This isn't even the creepiest part. After his interest would finish, he would get in the ring with Paul Bearer, who was his manager, and would use the powers he had to set a cameraman on fire. To this day, I'm to not this 100 day. sure on how they did this. I understand that there are suits for movies that are made for catching on fire, which would be the best explanation for this, but the guy was on fire for a cool 20 seconds, if not more. This is just in that segment too. Let's take a look at everyone Kane set on fire over the years. Not to mention the psychotic run he had in 2004, where he had a fire theme and plugged a car battery into Shane which ended up landing him a role in a horror movie, See No Evil. My rating for Kane is a 10 out of 10. Bray Wyatt. The return of Bray Wyatt at Extreme Rules put people in a frenzy. People are fiending, no pun intended, to see what happens next. My peak curiosity with Bray Wyatt happened when he first debuted though. I remember watching those creepy vignettes where it showed him in a house in the middle of a swamp with random people walking all over the house. Then when he finally showed up with the Wyatt family, it made my 9 year old head think for a second. Is this real? They seem like they didn't really have a lot of supernatural characteristics. They seem like they could just be a group of actually crazy hillbillies who just live next door. When they had the feud with John Cena at WrestleMania 30, I remember just hoping in 4th grade, I was in 4th grade, John Cena didn't join the Wyatt family with them. When he came out that one time in a lamb mask, boy, I remember thinking that they could literally just pull up on John Cena outside of the ring at any time as they were always together and John Cena had even admitted that he was scared of the Wyatt family. John ended up beating Bray at WrestleMania 30 and the creepiness of Bray Wyatt was never really that real or that serious to me ever again. The mystique was gone. Although he pulled up at SummerSlam in 2019 with the Fiend character and 15 year old me thought it was dope, I just never really found him creepy. It was just really cool. I'll give Bray Wyatt a 7 out of 10. Last but not least, Mankind. The character started in spite of The Undertaker. Mankind was probably the most relatable character to a lot of people, which is what made it so unsettling. His promos were once talking about himself and how the world views him. He would talk about how people wouldn't expect for someone like him to be married and have kids and how he would smell the own flesh of his own blood in the matches he's been in. He would hold rats in his promos and I remember in specific the moves he would deliver. There was one where he would just choke his opponent 
and slam their head on the canvas repeatedly. It was a moveset that was just barbaric and didn't have a lot of technique to it. Literally any stranger on the street could do a lot of these moves. When he added Paul Bear, it honestly didn't add a lot of creepiness for me. It just didn't feel right because I feel like Paul Bear was always supposed to be with Undertaker and Kane. Overall, I would give Mankind a 7 out of 10. But other than that, guys, the video is over. Happy Halloween. I hope you guys enjoy it. Go celebrate. If you're a kid, go trick or treating. If you're an adult, you know what? AJ nothing but a number. Go trick or treating too. Subscribe. Do anything that you know will make my channel popping. Let me know in the comments which wrestler gave you nightmares as a kid. Peace.